the Black Ops 6 integration into Warzone, there are now over 177 new guns that you can choose from, which seems ridiculous to say, and over 33 of those 177 are brand new from Black Ops 6 specifically. So it's understandable to be confused as to which guns are good and which ones aren't. So to help you out, I'm going to be forming a deep dive into my top five favorite loadouts that I, as well as a lot of other players, have been using exclusively from the new Black Ops 6 weapon, as well as going into the stats as to what makes them good. Make sure to like the video and subscribe if you're new. We're going to split up our discussion into long range versus short range options. So what I have right here via True Game Data is the TTK charts for all the long range options that we're going to discuss today. Being the Model L, XM4, Ames 85, AK74, ASVAL, Krig, GPR, Goblin, and the XMG. And there's a couple big things to point out on this chart specifically. Now what you can see is that the Goblin hangs out pretty low compared to the big cluster of all the other long range options. But the Goblin's going to be a gun that we're not going to talk a whole lot about because it's a semi-automatic rifle. So for most casual players, it's not going to be appealing. And I haven't even seen most pro players use this. And the second big thing to point out, and this is our overall kind of picture that I want to discuss with you guys today. You can kind of see in the big cluster of all the other ARs, they're pretty close knit together. There's not going to be one that really outbeams another significantly, but there's going to be a lot of minor differences that make one gun better than another. We'll discuss that. But the overall picture is use what's comfortable. None of these guns are really going to outbeam each other. So if you like one versus another because of the overall feel, that's what I want you to pick out the most. But when we talk about feel, a big part of that, we have to talk about recoil control. And we're already going to get rid of the Model L and the AS Val. Their recoil patterns, they're not horrible, but they're just just not as good as the other options that we have. And unfortunately, we have this many guns. The AK-74 has to get booted too. It's not bad. It's just not as good as our other options. And another thing to bring up too is we're going to discuss the bullet velocities. Another reason why the ESVAL doesn't make the cut, as you can see right here, this yellow bar, it's on the lower end. So that means that its bullet velocity is not as good as a lot of the other guns. So you're going to have to lead your shots a lot further if you were to use this for like a long range primary. Obviously, the Model L takes the cake, but once again, its recoil is not that great. The AIM-85 actually isn't that bad, but it's way too weak for us to kind of put into our top five too. And that leads us with kind of all the other options that we haven't already gotten rid of being the XMG, the GPR, the Krig, the XM4, and one other build that's not listed in here as guns that are all kind of close and pack knit in terms of the bullet velocity. So that's not going to be a big factor as to why we don't use a certain one. Starting off, we're going to dive into the XMG. The XMG is the only LMG I've actually thought about using. Compared to the other LMGs, this one actually eliminates the slowest initially, but for where it counts past 40 meters, it has the best TTK. It, like its counter part the xm4 has very easy to control recoil and since you can just keep the stock mag on it because it's an lmg you can run an extra recoil attachment so if you're someone that doesn't like to fly around and you just like to sit on rooftops <coughs> camper <coughs> then this gun might just be for you and here's how i build this thing the main optics that i've seen a lot of pro players use are the willis three times but majority of the times i've seen players use the jason armory two times so being that i don't have this for this gun we're going to be using the willis three times which is perfectly fine but the two times does have a little bit less visual recoil and you will notice this is more consistent for when we're building a lot of the ARs, but the attachments don't kind of veer too different from each other. So starting this off, we're going to be using the compensator. We're going to also be using the reinforced barrel. The reinforced barrel is going to be the best barrel that you can use to start off definitely use the long barrel for most of your builds because a lot of times the reinforced barrel will actually be one of the ones that you unlock last but somehow some way i have this thing 44 out of 47 so we can use the reinforced barrel you're gonna also be using the vertical foregrip this is gonna be your best under barrel likely to run because it's gonna control your horizontal recoil it's gonna make it a little bit easier to control that and then normally this is where a lot of our ars if we're gonna run five attachments we're gonna have to use a magazine but this is the lmg right we don't have to do that so we can actually run the recoil springs which helps the uh, recoil control obviously both from vertical as well as horizontal and another thing I want to clear up, I'm not going to go through this specifically for every gun. If you guys want to run the gunfire wildcard and use three more attachments, for most ARs, you're likely going to have to use another magazine. So you're going to want to probably run the recoil springs as your another attachment of choice, as well as a stock in a rear grip. I don't really see a situation where you would want to run a laser, and that would be the only one that you would leave empty. The best rear grip, in my opinion, is probably the commando grip, being that it just boosts your aim down sight speed, as well as your sprint to fire speed, which for something like Resurgence, isn't that bad to boost? And then for the stock, I mean, it makes sense to me the balance stock likely is the best one to use you can use the one that helps with flinch which is the combat stock but the balance stock just gives you a little bit more movement, which once again for Resurgence isn't that bad. Next, we have the Krig C. The Krig made its way back into Warzone and it feels very similar to its previous variants of Call of Duty. Sitting in the middle of the TTK with one of the better bolt velocities that we have to choose from the other long range options, this is a very good gun to use. And I even dropped a 20 bomb with a very low level build. You have to unlock the Krig C in page six of the battle pass, but a new feature that they added in this Call of Duty, instead of going through all those sec 
characters and stuff that you had to previously you can actually scroll to each page and unlock whatever you'd like at the time that you want to unlock it so for the Krig, you got to go to page six unlock the whole thing and then you'll get it and so once again i have this thing at level 10 and i already dropped the 20 bomb with it so i promise you that this gun's not too bad but unfortunately since this gun literally just came out and it takes forever to level up in this game it's only level 10. so as we didn't have to with the xmg we're going to discuss what's the best attachments to use as we said before the jason armory is likely going to be the best optic to use i would also run the ported compensator on this that's just going to help mainly with the vertical recoil control i'm not too concerned about the first shot recoil because this really doesn't have a whole lot but it does help as we discussed earlier this is what a lot of the ars look like the long barrel is going to be all the way at the top so use that initially but you're going to want to use the reinforced barrel once you get that too the vertical foregrip is going to be the under barrel that you're going to want to use you're also going to want to use the extended mag tube once you get that so beyond that as we discussed you're probably going to want to throw on the commando grip the recoil springs and then we're also probably going to want to use the balance stock if you're going to be using the gunfighter wild card after the krig we have the lr 7.62 if you like sniping then you should love black ops 6 warzone as all of snipers that are bolt to action now one shot but it seems from the testing that's been done that the black ops 6 snipers have the better one shot distance the frost line is the faster sniper from black ops 6 specifically compared to the 7.62 so if you like the snipe more aggressively then you might like Imagine. that one better but the 7.62 has better one shot range and bolt velocity likely making it the better choice even though it's a tad bit slower similar to the Krig, my 7.62 is only level 10 but hypothetically i would use the suppressor i'm not someone that likes to sit on top of rooftops but when i do i don't want anyone to see where i'm shooting from so i think this is going to be the best muscle to use and just a disclaimer too this is the same exact build that i would use if i was building it for the frost line i believe i got this barrel through a blueprint but the reinforced barrel similar to all the ars and lmgs is also going to help boost your damage range as well as bullet velocity so for snipers that's going to help us out as well and like i said sniping is great but there's two bad things about it in black ops 6 one of them being that there's not a lot of attachments that really helps you with your overall mobility in terms of your ads times which is very important if you're thinking about things like quick scoping but one spot where you can actually help boost that is the rear grip the commando grip is likely going to be your best option because the only two things that i really care about when i'm thinking about mobility for a sniper is not only just the ads times but it's also the sprint to fire speed and the commando grip helps with both and the second bad thing about snipers and this one actually is probably even worse this is a change that they actually reverted back from modern warfare 2 into modern warfare 3 when you used to aim in with snipers your crosshair would not go directly where your reticle was so as you can see right here i'm showing this in the firing range with the exact build that i'm showing you with the lr762 my crosshairs are not going where i'm aiming in consistently but to fix this there is a specific attachment which i think is pretty dumb but nonetheless there's a specific attachment to fix it and that is the target laser so i grinded out the frost line and i do have the target laser on here and you can see when I'm aiming in every single time, my crosshair is going right over where my reticle is landing. And this really helps when you're going to think about something like quick scoping. Because if you center perfectly right over where you think the enemy's head's going to be, and you aim in and it misses, and that's not your fault, well, that's pretty stupid. So once you got the target laser, use that. And last but not least, the best final attachment to use to really help boost your bullet velocity is going to be the NATO overpressure rounds. Because that's all that this does. It just helps with your bullet velocity. Coming in second, we have the XM4. This probably feels like the most consistent AR I've used, other than our top option. Like the AK model and Krieg, it sits right in the middle of the ttk pack but its biggest quality that separates it is its recoil control it does have some horizontal recoil a little bit more it's than our other team. builds the way we build it Actually, does change a little bit but most players will think that this feels good now to build this thing out similar to all the other ars that we would build you're going to use the jason armory two times scope you're also going to be using the reinforced barrel i'm so close level 44 the vertical foregrip and once you get the extended mag tube that's always going to be your best choice but if you feel like a gun has a little bit more horizontal recoil than you like i've been toying around with jumping back and forth between the port compensator as well as the recoil springs and personally i think that the recoil springs are going to be best but this is where i would really prioritize getting that gunfire wild card and make sure you get all eight attachments just boost the recoil and the sprint to fire speed just make it literally the best gun that you can possible and at number one we have the gpr the gpr is all about feel it's not broken for its ttk its bolt velocity isn't a laser beam or hit scan but it just feels good and mainly by that i mean that its recoil pattern is the easiest control out of all of our top five options and honestly out of probably any option there is out there so it's balance of good damage as well as easy control recoil makes it probably the best option that you can up. use right now and it's 100 what you'll see majority of the pros running and just like all of our other ARs, other than the xm4 we're going to be using the jason armory two times we're also going to be using the ported compensator once i get there the reinforced barrel once i get there their vertical foregrip is already there which is very nice and the extended mag two is something that is super essential for this gun and now we're going to be moving on to the smgs so to begin here's the ttk charts once again from true game data for every smg that's in black ops 6 and now kind of similar but also not similar to what we've been discussing for all the ars in terms of a big cluster of ttk and something that's not really going to influence our decision on why we use one versus why we don't there is a little bit more variability for the smgs the big one to take note of is the tanto 0.22 this gun slapped in multiplayer a lot of people thought this was actually going to be 
good in Warzone, but that's kind of the opposite. It's unforgiving, it shoots slow, and its TTK isn't even that good. I would expect a gun that shoots slower and is a little more unforgiving than the Tanto to have a better TTK than literally last out of all the options that we have to use. And the other big things to think about are the top three SMGs for TTK. We have the SOG, we have the Compact 92, and the Jackal PDW. TTK matters a little bit more for SMGs, as obviously those up-close fights when you're hitting more bullets than you are from longer range, and a lot of times you're not necessarily shooting at each other as you are with SMGs more consistently. So having a faster TTK TTK does matter a little bit more. But once again, it doesn't tell the whole story. So diving a little bit deeper, some things to point out. The fire rate, we've already discussed that with the Tanto. I mean, it's actually atrocious how slow it shoots. I'm really not concerned about it. The big thing to think about when we're talking about mag sizes, the PP... <laughs> It's a good PP. Now this base mag is 64, so you do not have to worry about adding another attachment to it for its magazine size. Now that does hurt it for its reload time. As you can see right here, the SOG as well as the KSV actually have pretty solid reload times, which is important for SMGs. But the other big things to think about are the ADS times, movement speeds, sprint to fire, and ADS movement speeds. To sum all of these up, you want the ADS time to be slower. This means that it requires less time for you to actually look down your sight. The fastest being the Jackal PDW. One of the slower ones being the Compact 92. And I know the Compact 92 does eliminate a little bit quicker than a lot of the other SMGs, but that kind of ruins it for me. Yes, we could add some attachments to probably boost it up a little bit, but we're going to add those attachments to the guns that already have a pretty good ADS time. So for that reason... I'm out. And then when we're looking at the movement speeds, those are pretty similar. The ADS movement speeds, those are pretty similar. But the sprint to fire times, there's a little bit more variability. The PP kind of having the worst, but you give and you take. You got a good mag on there. And the Jackal PDW and the SOG, both are looking pretty good to me. And then similar to the movement speeds, the sprint to fire speeds are pretty much the same too. To start things off, we're going to talk about the KSV. The KSV isn't anything special to me. And I feel like I could have put the compact above it because honestly, the KSV is just okay. It doesn't blow me out of the water with its TTK and its mobility, but it just gets the job done. It's the only SMG I felt the need to use an optic on it because it's so thick in the front. Unlike me being that I'm thick in the back, if you know what I mean. But overall, it's got some range, so it could be used if you play a little bit slower or as a sniper support, maybe. And similar to our ARs, you're going to notice that a lot of the SMGs likely have similar attachments as well. There's just some that are good and some that aren't good. But as we discussed, the KSV is thick. I mean, look at that thing. Thick and small. That's how we like it. So my favorite optic to use for SMGs is the Kepler Microflex. The compensator is going to be the best muzzle of choice, being that I'm not too concerned about the first shot recoil control control i really want the maximum recoil control that i can get and that is being the compensator the ksv already has good range so i don't think we need a barrel on it we're going to be running the extended mag one you could run the extended mag two on these things but i don't really think it's super necessary i mean look at that thing that's a banana clip that's really going to hurt your mobility overall so the one is probably the move and similar to a lot of the ars i really like sprint to fire and ads speed and the commando grip is going to be really good for that and then i'm kind of fighting a battle between which stock i like a lot of my smgs i've just been running no stock because i like the movement speed and the strafing speed the best I'm not too concerned about the hip fire movement speed because a lot of these SMGs, unless you actually add a laser to help with the hip fire, they're pretty bad at hip firing. So I do care more so what am I doing as I'm kind of running around as well as what am I doing when I'm shooting? And that's strafing. Now, where this differs a little bit, there's a lot of variability in terms of what you can do when you add the gunfighter wild card. For this build right here, I likely wouldn't worry about something of a barrel. So that would give me freedom to run an under barrel. And I believe that the Ranger foregrip is likely going to be the best one to use that it's going to help boost that horizontal recoil control, but it actually adds a little bit of mobility as well with your sprint moving speed. For the laser, I think that the best laser is honestly just the first one, the steady aim laser, because that's going to help with your hip fire. And then for the fire mods, there hasn't really been a lot of research out there on what the rapid fire attachments do. I mean, obviously it's going to make it kill faster. It's going to shoot faster, but I think the best one to use is likely just the recoil springs. Up next, we have the SOG. And honestly, the more I use this, the more I like it. Use your tokens as we did for the Krig on the third page in the battle pass, because right now this is actually the fastest eliminating SMG as we discussed. And I can definitely feel the difference in close range engagements. And once you max it out, you can actually run two of these, which seems kind of dangerous. But this is definitely for those movement goes. demon type of players, or if you're trying to up your movement game, because when you use it, you'll fly around. And honestly, that fits my play style pretty well, so I feel like the more I use this, and the more I level it up, it might become my favorite SMG. Now, as we discussed with the KSV, it actually had a pretty good damage range, so something that we didn't need to do was to add a barrel. I'm skipping ahead right here, but it caught my attention. The long barrel is probably going to be necessary for the SOG because you are going to lose gunfights between that kind of 10 to 15 meter range because that is where it drops off. So I even think if you got this thing maxed out that a long barrel is likely going to be a necessity. The recoil on this thing isn't too bad so I don't even think that the compensator is super necessary. I like the suppressor personally. The vertical foregrip obviously I mean horizontal recoil I know it's not that bad but I do like a little bit of assistance. I don't think there's any need to use the extended mag 2 on any SMG building off of what we discussed on the KSV. Unless you just want to be extra or super unnecessary I think the extended mag 
Mag 1 is going to be perfectly fine for every SMG that you need to use. And then I'm also using a Steady Aim Laser. This thing is built for movement. I want it to be like that. So hip firing is going to be super important to me. And that's what the Steady Aim Laser is going to provide. But unlike all the ARs and kind of how they matched up, you could kind of pick and piece together what you would do if you were to run Gunfighter. A lot of the SMGs, unless you really think you need an optic, you're not going to have to use one. So if you do want an optic, use Gunfighter. If you don't, then what you can actually do is throw a rear grip on. And this is kind of up to you to decide. I still think that the Commando Grip is probably one of the best ones. But a lot of players are actually using the CQB grip as well. Because if you're thinking of movement and you like dive to fire, sprint to fire, slide to fire, that's going to help all of that speed right there. For the stock, the balance stock is likely going to be a good option to use. Here's the akimbo right there. Dangerous. But the no stock attachment is going to be pretty good to use as well. The infiltrator stock is not the no stock for the SOG. It doesn't have one. So I probably would use the balance stock for gunfighter. And then for the fire mods, I likely would use the recoil springs. Next, we have the PP919. And this too, just like the SOG, may be a lot of players favorite SMG. With the huge mag, you can use another attachment for movement or recoil control. And when I actually tested all the SMGs, the PP has the lowest recoil out of all of them. So if you struggle to control recoil or you really look for that in your SMGs, then this is likely going to be a good option for you. The range on it isn't the best, but it's a really well balanced option that almost all players would enjoy to use now as we discussed as we discussed the recoil on this thing is actually pretty good so i don't think that you need to use the compensator on it but instead use the suppressor but we did talk about how the damage range isn't the best so i think the long barrel is going to kind of be necessary because that does help boost our damage range we don't need a magazine and i skipped over the optic but the iron charts are pretty clean as well and as i've talked about i really like the commando grip it's been feeling really really good the ads speed and the sprint to fire speed really does help boost the mobility on this thing and when given the choice i do like to use the no stock attachment as i just mentioned because I love the movement speed and the strafing movement speed that it adds. And you can't go wrong with the recoil springs. I mean, we're talking vertical and horizontal control. That is going to help out a lot. And the funny thing is, when running Gunfighter, I honestly love the iron sights on this thing. I would put an optic on it, I guess, but I would actually probably just add the steady aim laser and I wouldn't even add a magazine on it, to be honest with you. I mean, the fast mag, maybe, but it does ruin your magazine capacity by 14 because it brings it from 64 to 50. The fast mags, other than that, just bring it lower and I don't really like the extended mag because it chocks the mobility. So this is really one of those SMGs that you really don't need to worry about running gunfighter on at all. Next, we have the C9, the MP5, a classic. To think they would add the MP5 into a new COD and not make it good in Warzone, obviously this thing is gonna shred. Once again, this too may be a lot of players' favorite SMG to use. This has a really good consistent feel to it, good DTK, mobility, and with the right build, its hip fire can be solid as well. Now, I built this very similar to the PP because this also doesn't have crazy recoil. So I don't think we need to run the compensator on it, but instead we can run the suppressor. This is one of the few SMGs where I really run extended mag 2 it just feels a little bit better with it i noticed that i was running out of bullets a little bit when i was using it but obviously something to note is it's dependent on the game mode if you're playing solos you probably only need extended mag 1 if you're playing quads you might need two as stated i really like the no stock attachment the steady aim laser and the recoil springs are good as well and in this situation for my three attachments that i would use i would add the long barrel i would also likely add the ranger four grip and i would add the rear grip being either the commando or the cqb grip if i were to run gunfighter and lastly we have the jackal pdw and this is my favorite SMG for a couple of reasons. It's CTK is top three for almost all SMG range fights. It has the fastest sprint to fire times and fastest ADS times, the two most important qualities for an SMG other than TTK. And I myself am a guy that likes to maneuver. So with great mobility, this feels great in my hands. Since I don't feel the damage drop off like I do with the saw. It eliminates faster than the PP, plus I get the mobility like I do with the MP5 and a little bit more. Now this thing does have a little bit more bounce to it than the C9 and the PP do. So we are actually gonna run the compensator to help with our vertical recoil control. Control. As listed earlier, I do like the extended mag 1 on this in particular because it does eliminate a little bit quicker than, say, something like the C9 does where we're running the extended mag 2. I like the no stock attachment, the steady aim laser, and the recoil spring. A common trend in a lot of the SMGs that I've built. And similar to what we did with the C9, I would run the long barrel, I would run the Ranger four grip, as well as likely the CQB or the Commando rear grip if I were running Gunfighter. I appreciate you guys sticking around for the end of the video. Let me know in the comments what's your favorite build that you guys are currently using, and I'll catch you in the next one.